Now I come down here often. Right through where we're sitting here, going down there to that sandbar and coming from way up the top there is an energy line. Like the energy is elevated here. It's probably about 40 metres wide and we're sitting smack bang in the middle of it. And as I sit here in this energy, it allows me to just totally unwind and relax and get into that zone that I yearn for. And that helps me cope with the stresses and strains associated with a living in this hideous system we're in now. You know, where every facet of it is against us as Aboriginal people. So I need this goodness. <laughs> the goodness that keeps me alive and uh, keeps me focused. But this, this piece of land here, wow. It just has that X factor for me. And I just love it when you get those stunning moments when it's absolutely peaceful. It's beautiful. This is where the women and children talked about marriage. Girls were learning early about that. They also talked about how to interact with one another, food, plants, medicinal plants. If you go back in the old way, there was a time when the men and boys went across the other side of the river from Kings Park, what we call Kardagarup. Law started there and they went right through into the seven hills over the other side. But these 15 year olds, they'd swim across to the sandbar and the women and the children would be waiting here. The boys 14 years and under, all the girls not of marriageable age, which is under 15, and the women and the rest of the children would be waiting here while that law business was taking place in the seven hills over there. There's a story about a spirit woman who walked through here and she was as tall as the Alto Cirrus clouds are high. And she put her footprint in the river there. That's called Jenalup. Jenna is your foot. Jenalup is the place of the footprint. And she had this beautiful, long, flowing white hair that shimmered in the dull, eerie light. And she saw a little child on this side of the river and she picked it up and it was a little girl and she admired her beauty and put her in her hair. She noticed a little boy way over there. So she bent over and picked him up and when she did he had long fingernails. And he grabbed a strand of hair to hang on. By this time she'd stood up and that hair snapped and floated down. And this is what the result of it is. This is her hair going out there to the middle and beyond. We call this place Jundalup. This is the original, what they call Jundalup today. We say Jundalup. Jundal means hair, Jundal Jumba, the place of the long white hair. So all the while I'm sitting here, these things are resonating with me. We have totems and we have to know all about those totems. So that means you have to commit it to memory. When you have your totem, because you have such a connection to that totem, you know every conceivable aspect of it. My mum's totem, family totem's the pelican. She came from uh, the Pilbara. You know, I was in the Kimberley for six years, based in Fitzroy Crossing. It was great. I really enjoyed that life. Younger days, you know, four-wheel drive nut, park ranger, married a cray fisherman's daughter from Dongra, then like a fool went and got an education. <laughs> <laughs> Threw a spanner in the work. <laughs> I went to university to learn all of these things and make sure I could talk to people about the ancient Aboriginal way and bring it together with scientific way of looking at everything. I enjoy that. But that's why I work at Edith Cowan Uni, is because each of the campuses, southwest in Bunbury, that's here at Mount Lawley, and that's up at Joondala, they're all built on the same song line. When I was asked to work there, there was no hesitation. I just had to back off and go away and get it confirmed spiritually. And my well, six or seven years now. Yeah, and it's great. Yeah. You know, as we live in a place, walk through it following the song lines, we shed our skin. The skin falls into the soil 
because it's the most nutrient deficient soil on the planet. It replaces that nutrient deficiency with fungi and that fungi is favoured by several of our trees, particularly the shiaks, because we shed our skin, the mycorrhizals underneath them take it up and our DNA is in those trees. That's the connection and that means it's the tree of names. And in the wind, if you tune in and you know how to do that, you'll hear the voice of every person that's ever lived. It's a whole new way of looking at the world. So here we are now, sitting in this place. I guess it hasn't altered a lot, really. There's a bit of tar and cement and lawn, but that's it. And we'll always have this left here the energy of this place. Every conceivable aspect of life is here, if you look for it. 